Today, I want to share 20 questions with you on the eye, ear, and the mouth. I suggest that after each question, you pause the video and answer the question. In so doing, you're evaluating how much you really know. Let's begin. Question one. Which of the following does not cause conductive hearing loss? A. Cerumen impaction B. Otosclerosis C. Tympanic membrane perforation and D. Presbycusis The answer is D. Presbycusis Presbycusis causes sensory neural hearing loss. It is age-related hearing loss. It is typically symmetric high frequency hearing loss. Question two, which of the following is not a component of Meniere disease? A, sensory neural hearing loss, B, tinnitus, C, vertigo, and D, conductive hearing loss. The answer is D. The classic presentation of Meniere disease is hearing loss, tinnitus, and vertigo. Question three, which of the following terms best describe age-related hearing loss? A, otosclerosis, B, presbycusis, C, cholesteatoma, and D, minier disease? The answer is B, presbycusis. Presbycusis is age-related hearing loss. Question four, which of the following medications causes reversible hearing loss. A. Aminoglycoside B. Chemotherapeutic medication C. Antimalarial medications and D. Loop diuretics. The answer is C. Antimalarial medications. Aminoglycoside, chemotherapeutics and the loop diuretics all cause irreversible hearing loss. Aspirin and NSAIDs cause partially reversible hearing loss. Antimalarial drugs causes reversible hearing loss. Question five. Cholesteatoma is a mass composed of keratinizing squamous epithelial cells associated with the tympanic membrane and resulting in conductive hearing loss. Which of the following is the treatment of choice? A. Chemotherapy B. Radiation therapy C. Surgical removal and D. Antibiotics The answer is C. Cholesteatoma may erode into the trochlear, ossicles, tympanic membrane and facial nerve. The treatment is surgical removal. Question six. Vestibular schronoma, which is also known as acoustic neuroma, is a benign neoplasm that causes sensory neural hearing loss, tinnitus, and sometimes vertigo. Which of the following family history puts persons at high risk for these tumors? A. Neurofibromatosis B. Cholesteatoma C. Chronic otitis media and D. Vestibular neuritis The answer is A. Neurofibromatosis A family history or personal history of pneumofibromatosis 2 puts persons at high risk for these tumors. Question 7. A 70-year-old man complains of hearing loss, which progressed over the last six months. A vibrating tuning fork was placed in the center of the forehead. If he had conductive hearing loss, which of the following statements would be true? A. The vibration would be heard louder in the affected air. B. The vibration would be heard louder in the unaffected ear. C. The vibration will be heard equally in both ears. And D. The vibration would not be heard 
he need the air? The answer is A. This is the Weber test. In the Weber test, the vibrating tuning fork is placed in the center of the forehead and the sound would be heard louder in the affected air if it were conductive hearing loss. Question 8. A 70 year old man complains of hearing loss, which progressed over the last six months. A vibrating tuning fork was placed in the center of the forehead. If he had sensory neural hearing loss, which of the following statements would be true? A. The vibration will be heard louder in the affected air. B. The vibration will be heard louder in the unaffected air. C. The vibration will be heard equally in both airs. And D. The vibration would not be heard in either air. The answer is B. The vibration will be heard louder in the unaffected air. This is the Weber test. In the Weber test, the vibration is the, the vibrating tuning fork is placed in the center of the forehead and the sound would be heard louder in the unaffected air if it were sensory neural hearing loss. Question 9. A 70 year old man complains of hearing loss in his left ear, which progressed over the last six months. A vibrating tuning fork was placed on his left mastoid bone until it was no longer heard. The fork was removed and held outside the left ear. If he had conductive hearing loss, which of the following statements would be true? A. The vibration will be heard louder on the mastoid. B. The vibration will be heard louder when the fork is held outside the air. C. The vibration on the mastoid and outside the air would be equal. And D. None of the above is true. The answer is A. The vibration will be heard louder on the mastoid. Question 10. A 70 year old man complains of hearing loss in his left ear, which progressed over the last six months. A vibrating tuning fork was placed on his left mastoid until it was no longer heard. The fork was removed and held outside the left ear. If he had sensory neural hearing loss, which of the following statements would be true? A. The vibration will be heard louder on the mastoid. B. The vibration will be heard louder when the fork is held outside the air. C. The vibration on the mastoid and outside the air would be equal. And D. None of the above is true. The answer is B. Question 11. In the United States, which of the following is the leading cause of antibiotics prescriptions for children? A. Otitis externa, B. Otitis media, C. Tonsillitis, and D. Conjunctivitis. The answer is B. In some countries, as the Netherlands, management is frequently observation only. In contrast to the United States, where this diagnosis is the leading cause of antibiotics for children prescription. Question 12. A 10 year old child was evaluated for otitis media. Which of the following physical finding has the highest likelihood ratio for acute otitis media? A. Tympanic membrane erythema. B. Tympanic membrane bulging. C. Tympanic membrane cloudiness. And D. Tympanic membrane immobility. The answer is B. In the pediatric literature, Tympanic membrane bulging has the highest likelihood ratio for acute otitis media, followed by tympanic membrane cloudiness and immobility. Question 13. Which of the following is a treatment of choice for acute otitis media in patients without medication allergies? 
The choices are A, Augmentin, B, Amoxicillin, C, Zitromax, and D, Penicillin. The answer is B, Amoxicillin. Question 14. A child, a 10-year-old child was diagnosed with acute otitis media and was treated with amoxicillin. Two days later, the child returned to the ER without any improvement. Which of the following medication should be the second line treatment? A. Augmentin, B. Azithromycin, C. Bactrin, and D. Erythromycin. The answer is A. Augmentin. Question 15. Pseudomonas aeruginosa accounts for 50% of cases of otitis externa. Which of the following organism is the second most common cause of this air infection? A. Staphylococcus aureus. B. Herpes zoster. C. Group A streptococcus. And D. Group B streptococcus. The answer is A. Staphylococcus aureus. Question 16. Which of the following is not a risk factor for otitis externa? A. Increased moisture. B. Use of cotton tip swab in the air canal. C. Use of bobby pin to clean the air. And D. Increase the rumen production. The answer is D. Question 17. Which of the following is the first line treatment for allergic rhinitis? A. Oral steroid. B. Intranasal steroid. C. Intranasal antibiotics. And D. Oral antihistamine. The answer is B. Intranasal steroid. Question 18. Which of the following is the most common cause of epistaxis in children? A. Facial trauma. B. Nose picking. C. Administration of intranasal medication and the D. Viral infection. The answer is B. Nose picking. Question 19. Which of the following is the most common malignancy in the oral cavity? A. Basal cell carcinoma. B. Squamous cell carcinoma. C. Melanoma. And the D. Kaposi sarcoma. The answer is B. Squamous cell carcinoma. Question 20. Which of the following represents atrophic glossitis? A. It is a swollen tongue with visible taste buds. B. It is a bright red smooth surface tongue without visible taste buds. C. It is a blue tongue without visible taste buds. And D. It is a swollen tongue with laceration. The answer is B. It is a bright red smooth surface tongue without visible taste buds. Well, thanks for watching. Remember, your brain is an incredible organ. It has the capacity to absorb, associate, store, and recall. I wish you well. Good night.